What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look through all of the heroes in Orcs Must Die 3 and show the differences between the different ones. Now, the basic of each hero difference is their double jump ability, basically. Their special move is going to be different on each individual hero. Uh, this is going to be just very similar to a double jump in lots of other games. However, they are very unique throughout Orcs Must Die 3. That is not the only difference with the heroes, though, so let's pop on in and take a look at them. We're going to start things off with Cygnus. Let's check him out. Now, right off, Cygnus has the highest base mana pool in the game of all the heroes. Uh, we can test this with how many stone staff usages we can get off. Cygnus is actually the only hero that can get five blasts of a stone staff off with their mana pool. So Cygnus has the highest mana pool of all the heroes in the game. Now, Cygnus' special ability is quite unique, and it's the only hero in the game that has an ability that heals. Uh, Cygnus' special is a feigned death, where Cygnus will instantly lose all aggro, and you see the green particle effect there, that is actually a heal. This can be quite effective uh, when you're taking any sort of damage. It is a really slow heal, it's not as fast as like being at your rift, However, you can do it anywhere, and it doesn't require anything special. So if Cygnus takes a little damage or is getting mobbed up, can easily come over, just feign death, and the orcs will ignore him and just run on past, and Cygnus' health will be restored. This ability costs no mana, it can be used at any time, and it doesn't have a cooldown as well, so you can pop this just as often as you'd like. Now, moving things on over to Egan. Egan has got a very special place in my heart personally, as Egan is the only hero that special ability can create combo points. Uh, that is pretty beast. Now, Egan additionally has high base mana. If we look at the stone staff usages, can get four, almost five blasts with the stone staff off. Egan actually has the same mana pool, it appears, as Gabriella. Uh, however, Egan's a special ability is a ground slam that is also going to deliver a, a little bit of a confuse. Now, these are combos, y'all. These can be comboed together, and in fact, Egan by himself, just doing some weapon swapping using three different weapons, can achieve an X9 combo just on his own with his weapons and no traps at all. So with Egan's special ability creating combo points, Egan is the high scoring professional. So every high score attempt, you will want to make sure you're using Egan as you're just losing out on free combos if you don't. Next up, let's take a look at Gabriella. Uh, Gabriella is from Orcs Must Die 2, of course, uh, made a reappearance in OMDU. Uh, Gabriella has the second highest mana pool only to Cygnus in the game. Now, there's not a whole lot of specials with Gabriella. Her double jump ability is a glide, which is extremely helpful and super fun in some instances. But Gabriella's main benefit is having a slightly higher mana pool, making Gabriella a really fun choice to play if you're going to be spamming abilities. And next up, we have Kelsey. Now, Kelsey, like Max, has a very, very low mana pool. Uh, Kelsey is not the ability spammer, there's no doubt. However, Kelsey is a little bit tanky. She can take some shots. Now, Kelsey's special move, uh, let's look at her Stone Staff usage first. She can only get three Stone Staff Blasts off, almost a fourth, but only three Stone Staff Blasts off with her Mana Pool. Now, Kelsey's special ability is a Levitate, which can get you around through lots of situations throughout the map. Um, it does drain mana, though. Now, when you run out of mana, as you see, you stop and you can no longer move, so... You're not going to drop, you're going to stay levitating, however, you won't be able to move throughout there. 
Now, uh, Kelsey is super fun to play. She's got an absolutely awesome character model. And I mentioned she is tanky. So particularly if you are taking a lot of damage or if you want to play, say, with melee up front, uh, Kelsey can be almost unkillable with the proper loadout if you give her a nice blade staff with healing, for example. Uh, so Kelsey is super fun to play, just an awesome character model, no doubt, and she offers that levitate ability. Don't get yourself stuck in the middle of that levitate, though, as you could end up in a pinch there. And next up, we have good old Maximilian. Max is the OG, of course, uh, the only playable character in Orcs Must Die 1, and Max has been here through the duration. Now, just like Kelsey, Max is very tanky. He's going to have a little bit higher health than the other heroes. Uh, however, his mana pool is lower. Uh, if we take a look at the stone staff usage, Max can get three, just almost four. The second the mana regen starts to kick in, Max gets a fourth one off. And Max's special movement ability is a straight up double jump. So... Good stuff here. This was unlockable, of course, in the first game, and Max's double jump has no cooldown and uses no mana, so you can spam it whenever you want. If you want to jump around, or if you want to be tanky, then Max could be the playable character for you. And then, last but not least, we have Vorwick. Let's pop on in and check him out. Now, Vorwick is another tanky one, and the mana pool is light on it. With uh, the heroes that do have the additional health and can take a little bit more damage, that means they are going to have less mana. So, Vorwick is right on par with Kelsey. Uh, you get the three stone staff usages. Not quite a fourth there. Not even close to a fourth, actually. Now, Vorwick's special is debatably the best movement ability in the game, and that is it is a teleport, and it's got no cooldown, and it uses no mana. So if you want to get around the map fast, Vorwick is the one for you. So who would play Vorwick? Well, someone who wants a tankier hero, uh, maybe people that are fans of melee, and then people that are wanting to traverse the map very quickly, Vorwick will get the job done for you. So, debatably, the coolest movement ability in the game, no doubt. Uh, Vorwick, of course, is an absolute beast with getting around the map. Uh, this matches the theme of Vorwick's portals, and it's just a lot of fun. I mean, it's super fun to play. Who doesn't want to teleport around? I mean, that's just good times, no doubt. So in short, there is really no specific best hero. Each hero is situational and will match your playstyle. Uh, the only hero that I would say that is 100% best in slot is without a doubt Egan, if you are chasing high scores and going for combos. Being the only hero that offers a combo point with their special ability, or multiple combo points for that matter, it makes Egan the best in slot in the high-scoring world. If you want to use your abilities and uh, spam things out that do require mana, then Cygnus, Egan, or Gabriella would be your top picks. If you find yourself taking too much damage, Cygnus, of course, has that Fade, Death, and Heal. And then if you want to be tanky, then Kelsey, Max, or Vorwick are the heroes for you. Uh, of course, Vorwick having the best movement ability as far as getting around fast, and then Kelsey having that levitate that will allow her to float over any possible terrain area. So that will do it for our hero overview in Orcs Must Die 3. I am really digging the game. It's been an absolute blast to play. I am so, so happy to play, be playing an Orcs Must Die game once again right here on the channel and there is going to be much, much more of it. If there is something specific with Orcs Must Die that you would like to see, make sure to let me know down in the comments below, and I will do my best to get some sort of content made for you. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.